Hey everyone, I want to talk about Cardano today. Uh, one of the things I spoke about yesterday was the bullishness in the market with Bitcoin and how that's really driving the market and how altcoins will lag behind uh, initially because Bitcoin dominance is high. Uh, well, we're starting to see some separation errors, some reduction in Bitcoin dominance, and we're starting to see some altcoins run. Cardano has run huge among them. And let's uh, look at the reason why Cardano has really take uh, leaps and bounds. Well, first, it, it's that Charles Hoskinson is named as a member of the U.S. Crypto Advisory Board here that Donald Trump is setting up for um, 2025. That's huge, right? Because you're getting a massive brain here. Somebody who's been in crypto for a long time, he helped uh, Vitalik start uh, Ethereum and uh, went, then went on his own way because he didn't like the direction Ethereum was going and had other ideas and wanted to create Cardano. And Cardano has been around for a very long time here. It's got a bright future. Smart contracts is its main focus. It is a competitor with Ethereum, with Avalanche, with Solana, with others. But I want to talk about what it is doing here and what its connection is with Bitcoin. So Cardano has integrated Bitcoin OS, that Bitcoin operating system, Grail Bridge. The integration could unlock trillions of liquidity for Cardano. And for Bitcoin, it unlocks a new layer of programmability and usability for sure. Uh, great potential here. And this is the first time that Bitcoin will be able to be utilized for something else, especially smart contracts. I mean, it opens the door for a lot of different things. I think some of the fears people have, you know, because Bitcoin is all about decentralization. And um, Charles Hoskinson wanted to make sure that this was very secure and still decentralized with no chance for any issues there. No intermediaries, right? You didn't want to have any third party intermediaries. So Cardano has become the first layer one blockchain to integrate interoperable capabilities, paving the way for seamless interactions between the two ecosystems, meaning Cardano and Bitcoin. The integration enables trustless transfers at the centralization right there of Bitcoin, no need for an intermediary and Bitcoin assets on to Cardano while also granting it access to Cardano's smart contracts and DeFi apps without intermediaries. So no intermediaries on either end. It's made possible by BitSnark, a zero knowledge based verification solution that ensures secure cross chain transfers without altering without altering Bitcoin's core protocol. The partnership marks a significant milestone for the Cardano and Bitcoin ecosystems. For Cardano, the integration will unlock trillions of dollars in liquidity. Really, really could dramatically help uh, Cardano here. Granting users the access of vast pools of, uh, of assets to dramatically expand the ecosystem's DeFi capabilities. The influx could supercharge Cardano's base DeFi applications and enable the creation of new innovative financial products and services. So, I mean, it really enables, I, it really just open, blows the door wide open for what Cardano could do and what financial products could be made in the future and integrated into Cardano from Bitcoin, vice versa. Meanwhile, the partnership brings Bitcoin a new level of programmability and usability that it doesn't currently have, which is huge, allowing network to interact with other blockchains and participate in smart contracts on other networks in a trustless and secure manner. So Charles Hoskinson kind of gets into here a little bit on Twitter to clear up the skepticism um, because the integration has been met with excitement from Cardano community, but Bitcoin people, right? Because Bitcoin people, Bitcoin maxis want Bitcoin to be just completely separate on its own. So there's skepticism there. And there's some people raise concerns about potential security and decentralization trade-offs while connecting with other blockchains. But Hoskinson says, remember that the Bitcoin operating system isn't a bridge, it's a brain. And that brain is going to let Bitcoin flow into the crypto world. And they will finally get to ditch their boring lives and enjoy DeFi, GameFi, and the magic of smart contracts. So uh, Mike Barty gets in here. Interesting take on the Bitcoin operating system. While it could open up new possibilities for Bitcoin, it's crucial to consider the potential trade-offs between innovation and Bitcoin's core principles of security and decentralization. Which I agree. Like I love what I love about Bitcoin. It is completely decentralized. Obviously, you need no third-party intermediary. So I think that's vital, but it seems like they're not giving up anything. 
So you still have no third party intermediary and uh, you don't have, you still are completely decentralized. So Hoskinson gets into it, um, stating that the movement of mine Bitcoin does not impact the network's core value. He emphasized that the BOS integration enables BT Bitcoin users to interact with other ledgers that only Cardano allows, UTXO transactions natively, paving the way for a smart contract layer on Bitcoin. I think that's the biggest piece, the smart contract layer. You know, the DeFi, the GameFi, those things are great, but I think smart contracts ultimately might be the biggest impact that Cardano makes on it. I'm sure the games and those things will be used as well, but smart contracts, I think, will be the biggest piece here. We'll see. We'll see how that plays out. So whether your, Bit whether your Bitcoin stays at home or you go visit other change, it doesn't impact the Bitcoin network. With the Bitcoin operating system, they can now interact with other ledgers. Only with Cardano can you do it natively with the UTXO and soon pay your transactions fees in Bitcoin. This means Bitcoin now has a smart layer contract. So, I mean, that's that's really huge when you look at it. So the potential, the future here for Bitcoin or for Cardano and Bitcoin is is big, bigger for Cardano for sure, right? Because Bitcoin is the biggest player out there. But God, when you look at it, Cardano has done something nobody else can do because Ethereum couldn't do this because the fees would have been far too high. You know, because Bitcoin can have higher fees too, nowhere near Ethereum, but it can have higher fees where Cardano, you have next to no fees. The fees are minimal. Um, so this is really going to help. It's going to be something that it's going to take a little while potentially to for the use case to come in here. Um, but it is something that I'm excited about. I'm really bullish on Cardano long term. Look at it right now, and I believe it's 55 cents. Um, but it's it was up in the 60s, lower 60s this week. And let's see, I think it's up around 65% on the on the week here. Um, let me pull this up here. Let's see if I can share this tab here. All right. So we're looking at Bitcoin. Let's look at Cardano. It's 55 cents now. One month, it's up 58.33%. That's just solid, but last week, 65, almost 65%. That's huge. And a lot of that's um, just based off the news not necessarily of the, the partnership when this came out around the end of October, on the 25th of October. But the big news was Hoskinson being named as a member of the U.S. Crypto Board, Advisory Board, which is going to be huge for the future of Cardano for sure. It's going to allow probably all kinds of other partnerships that wouldn't have been there otherwise. So bright future for Card Cardano. I see it getting the $8 easily. The cycle may be 10 I believe the previous high was around three dollars and thirty cents, so it's going to be well more than double that. And I wouldn't be surprised to see it go well north of ten. But conservatively, let's look at it in eight to ten dollar range right now. So if you're at fifty five cents, and I've been buying it since it was in the teens, lower twenties, and not long ago it was only thirty two cents a week ago, and then it went up in the sixty some cent range. So we're still talking about even if it goes to eight to ten dollars, you know, you could do ten to twenty x in here if it goes higher. So big potential with Cardano, getting bullish on the long term. Um, XRP is another one I want to talk about. We'll talk about that tomorrow in tomorrow's video. But today I wanted to make all about Cardano and why the future is so bright. And those two reasons are obviously big. But I also want to talk about Car um, Charles Hoskinson's. He's always wanted to slow build Cardano. He was never in a rush to do anything big. Slow and steady wins the race. He's it's the tortoise and the hare. You know the hare is Solana. Solana's killing it, and the, and the big player in the cycle. And Sui's becoming the next biggest player in the cycle. But Cardano will have its run up in its time, and long term, it could overtake Ethereum. Would not surprise me at all. Well, I'm looking forward to see how it plays out in this cycle. All right, everybody, we will catch you in the next video.